Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new mock draft. This one's going to have plenty of trades, especially in the top 10 stuff moving around and some unexpected picks. This one should be a fun one. I was able to put it together generally, you know, quick. That being said, heading right on into the first overall pick in the 2024 NFL mock draft we have going here today. Oh, sorry, did I say pick? I meant trade. We're going to have the Washington Commanders trading up to the first overall pick, and that would obviously take a little bit more than just the 36th overall pick. It's just that this mock draft simulator doesn't really do trade compensation that well and then if i overcompensate it's not even gonna let me trade with the washington commander's first pick of the draft we're going with caleb williams keeping him in washington he is a hometown native there in washington good quarterback good improviser good all the way around i think there's questions about like character and stuff but i don't i don't think so personally i think uh, you can read up on it watch the videos watch some interviews and i think you'll find everything kind of just checks out maybe he's just you know a little bit different which is fine nothing wrong with like a unique mindset and he comes in he's the best quarterback in this draft class for me and for a lot of other people and especially the experts up there doing what they do caleb williams pretty straightforward the number one overall pick in the draft and in 99 percent of the scenarios number two chicago is going with jane daniels they are getting a another running quarterback and i think that this wasn't like my first you know thought i was thinking maybe drake may here i don't see him trading down again i was kind of like running through it and i'm like yeah just Jaden daniels and the aspect like they've worked with a quarterback that's good on his uh legs and here's Jaden daniels a chicago bear someone i think actually has a higher floor than than that's getting talked about for him right now i just did the quarterback ranking so please go watch that i thought it was a good video i put a lot of time into that one so if you want to learn about the quarterback class go there it's top 12 qb so you can even learn about the depth but Jaden daniels being picked number two overall great with his uh feet and i think he's really good down the field now there are some questions about his arm but the mental awareness like the the iq doesn't seem to be an issue he's got better every year in college it's this the normal things we talk about Jaden daniels i just think that he's uh solidified himself as a definite you know contender for the number two overall selection for the number two quarterback over drake may with the safe aspect of his game over drake may there's total different um you know conversations when you talk about development of some of these players but Jaden daniels to me a guy i would probably have you know up above drake may on a draft board if that makes sense trade number two new england is going to be trading down with the minnesota vikings who have recently traded for the texans pick in this draft going with 111 and 123 and swap for 103 i think it'll be a lot more than this if they ultimately decide to move up this much and they're not trying to set up with a move with the cardinals or the chargers or you know anybody else i think if they're jumping all the way up to three the trade compensation will obviously have to be a little bit more than this but that will get it done for the Minnesota Vikings to be picking in the number three spot and ultimately selecting Drake May, the North Carolina quarterback, standing at 6'4", 223 at the combine, I believe, or 6'3", 220, uh, either or. Great size, prototypical, arm talents all over the place, and so are his, his decisions. I don't think that he was amazing on tape when it came to the, uh, like what I was talking about, Jaden Daniels, like just making the right decisions, the IQ. Drake May was a little bit different, a little bit shoddy, and he had worst weapons around him forced him to have some urgency that he wasn't really great under with like hero ball and etc so drake may's evaluation was still very spotty but him as a prospect in terms of what the nfl will think of him projecting upside all of the things you want to talk about for traits quarterbacks nfl all that the whole conversation drake may fits to a t and i think he is worth trading up for he's a good player now he might have to ease his way into the nfl whether it's sitting or just taking the back seat letting the run game go which you can't really do in minnesota but i thought it was a good move to bring sam darnold in maybe you let him start if you don't think drake may's ready i do think drake may would ultimately end up in like a quarterback battle but with the mindset of we we might have to sit him and you are very aware of that when you're picking him top three i just don't think he'd be amazing right away it can kind of hurt his confidence and you know we've all we've all seen like zach wilson before i don't want it to be like that so may obviously a different player he's a bit younger it's a good pick here at three for me still i know i'm talking pretty down on drake may but i think the prospect you're getting at number three is great and the upside is amazing and much higher than Jaden daniels in my opinion now he is also good on his legs something people also forget by the way with drake may he is a little bit um you know worse than Jay daniels like considerably he is good for his size with his legs he's like surprisingly elusive 
aggressive and powerful on the ground as well. So something that can kind of add to uh, to his game and maybe you rely on early is just his mobility and the ability to um, make plays with his arms and legs instead of with his mind might be a way to go about it as well. But Drake May, number three overall to the Minnesota Vikings. Harvard Harrison Jr. with the Cardinals sticking and picking at number four overall. Uh, Harrison, I mean, we've been seeing some of this like neighbors talk. Brian Thomas Jr. obviously getting a lot of hype right now. And I'm, I'm not saying like they aren't great players, but Marvin Harrison Jr. to me just seems very sound. And I'm a fan of sure things. I'm not really a betting guy. I'm not great with projecting and kind of looking at traits and be like, okay, so that means this at the next level. I'm like, how are you right now? How does that translate? And Marvin Harrison Jr. with his size route running the IQ he plays with obviously stands out and especially compared to some of the other guys in this class. But Marvin Harrison Jr. to me just looks very well rounded, prototypical size, great movement at his size. And obviously there are some of the uh, the quick twitch freaks out there that teams might prefer. Athlete or not, Marvin Harrison Jr. is still good. There are some character concerns flying around right now between missing a media day at the combine and then skipping out on his pro day. Obviously not a great way to go about his pre-draft process or not the idea way to go about a pre-draft process if you're Marvin Harrison Jr. And I'm really curious as to what is going on with him because I thought he was a very well-spoken young man said type of deal where he he seemed to be the right like mindset like we saw Roma Dunze. I thought he would be kind of that type but I guess not that has me kind of questioning it a little bit but I don't think uh I don't think that teams will take that too seriously if you will I, I'm not really sure how to phrase it oh man the Chargers moving back or, no sorry the the moving back yes but the chicago bears moving back up to number five overall and i'm curious if you guys see it before i even make the selection Jaden daniels number two we're going to bring in his lsu teammate malik neighbors they see the opportunity and they're going to seize it they have dj moore on roster they made the signing or the the trade for keenan allen and just imagine malik neighbors being a freak in the slot imagine that receiving room with cole Komet and uh, Jane Daniels under center. Obviously, they're trying to fix that offensive line on the missing pieces so far, and they've done a good job. I don't really see the downside of this pick, if I'm being honest. I really do like Malik Neighbors. I think you're aggressive now. I think you're trying to set it up. Ryan Poles obviously has been playing the long game with Justin Fields, and he says, sorry, like, I'm going to lose my job here soon. So we've really got to make some strides. We've got to make it all count now. And Malik Neighbors is the perfect move for him at five to pair him with his LSU teammate, Jaden Daniels, and moving back up in and using your resources that are provided to you and actually attacking and getting some good players and some uh, bona fide ballers out of LSU. Neighbors and Daniels seem to have a good connection there, and I haven't gotten to Neighbors uh, for his final evaluation so i'll withhold some of the comments on you know what i'm i'm thinking about him right now but i've heard like obviously the quick tip twitch and that kind of stood out to me on first go around so malik neighbors to me looks like a good player i wasn't as high on him as others were on my first watch he was still i think my receiver too i wasn't as high to the point where you know top five but i'm gonna rely on some of the other people's you know eyes brains all that good stuff and and take their word on it and pick him top five trade back up for him and Again, mock drafts are more what you hear than what you see. And I'm hearing a lot of Malik Neighbors' is elite. So we're going to go with Malik Neighbors. Things work out perfectly for the New York Giants, who will go with J.J. McCarthy. You have Daniel Jones there. Dable says he's going to be the starter definitively, like just as clear cut as that. But I do think that ends up being the scenario with J.J. McCarthy drafted to the roster. You can't cut Jones right now. It is way too expensive. The Denver Broncos kind of did the same thing here with Russ, except they bit that bullet. And instead, they're kind of committing to Jones for another year. Maybe draft McCarthy, let him sit, because I don't think McCarthy... It's not fair to just throw him into the fire right away. Let him adjust and have his time where he can sit. I'm very high on McCarthy in terms of, you know, the traits I see on tape. But there are still some inconsistencies that I'm not a fan of when it comes to McCarthy and the way that he... Uh, might project at the next level, especially in the pocket. I know people talk about uh, Michael Penix, be best pocket passer, McCarthy right up there with him. I don't, I don't think it's exactly that simple with uh mccarthy's poor he makes stuff happen don't get me wrong he's exhilarating every here and there he's got his flashes but the pocket presence for me was 
often an issue when I was watching his tape. There was just too much, um, there's too much not enough. He, he wasn't doing enough in the pocket to either get out of the way or he's trying to do too much that it ends up not going anywhere. So McCarthy to me, again, inconsistencies, obviously sit a year behind an NFL quarterback in an NFL franchise for a year and we'll, we'll obviously tune some things up and we'll see how he comes out swinging if this is the pick. I think this is the ideal situation for him. Get drafted, not be forced to start right away. Don't throw him into the fire. Let him kind of absorb some of the knowledge he'll, uh, he'll be fed through the first year on the bench. And then he'll have his chance, be a, a guy that, I don't, I don't know if I'd say come out swinging. I think he'd kind of come out as he was in college where he was more of a, a manager. He was kind of like a leader, but he was also playing when he had to. He wasn't the, the guy that took over the game. McCarthy, when he had to, he wasn't terrible. And he was really good on the third down and long. Like there's just things about McCarthy. Again, there are things to love and there are things to not love as much. Or it still falls pretty good for the Tennessee Titans going Joe all at the seventh overall pick good pass protector uh pretty good in the run good getting left and right in case he has to do a double assignment and a zone blocking scheme or whatever so Joe all the pick here for me for the Tennessee Titans at seven pretty straightforward I'm not going to hit on this one as much there's not much as much to talk about and I'll kind of go past some of these guys especially if I haven't gotten to their full evaluations yet the Denver Broncos just called the Atlanta Falcons says hey we want to move up four spots and I don't know if you guys know where I'm going with this but it's a trade and the trade is executed and we're going with Bo Nix. People are going to have a field day with this one. I don't see the problem with it. I love Bo Nix. He's a very good quarterback. Uh, Phil Sims is with me on that. I started ranking him really highly uh, to begin the process. I was like, this guy is amazing. I had him over Drake May in terms of film grade. And then on my final evaluations, which I just finished up last week, uh, Bo Nix finished on top again, uh, not on quarterback one, but I just don't see the the bad that everybody else is talking about. His arm's fine. Everything's good. I like Bo Nix a lot. And I think he is pretty easily a Sean Payton type. It, you look at Drew Brees and I'm not saying there's the exact you know connection there. There's not a comp or anything but Nix is just a clean prospect. I, I'll keep using that form because I think he is. I think he's just clean, a very polished. And what are you doing? Trading up, using extra to get him. You just cut Russell Wilson. You have Jarrett Stidham. Uh, you know, obviously, what's his name? Sean Payton coming out saying it's a possibility or like hinting like, yeah, it's, it's like a relatively in the picture for them to move up. And you're passing over some of these teams that might need a quarterback with New England, Atlanta, and the the Raiders, most importantly, like you're just getting ahead of everybody else trading up, making sure you get your guy that I think can ultimately be a very good player in the league. And especially under a Sean Payton who has done it before, who's experienced. I think Bo Nix himself is very experienced. And again, just a clean prospect. Go watch the quarterback breakdown. I get way deeper into it and why Bo Nix is my QB2 in the uh, season right behind Kayla Willis. I wouldn't say right behind. They're a tier away from each other. But Bo Nix, very good. And I don't get where people are kind of standing on that right now. And I think he can be a top 10 pick. Pretty good turnout for the Chargers as they have traded down and still gotten Roma Dunze. They're Keenan Allen replacement, if you will. They are without Mike Williams or Keenan and Allen. They're stuck with Josh Palmer and Quentin Johnston, Darius Davis. The list could continue with some of the guys that I don't even remember. But Ramadunze comes in. He gives you a wide receiver one presence right away. Maybe a wide receiver two to Joshua Palmer while Quentin Johnston continues to get his feet under him in the NFL. And Ramadunze would help out uh, Justin Herbert quite a bit, especially as a bailout option, obviously, right? He's just a big body receiver, phys uh, physical specimen, not physical sesame. It's not a word, not not two words, actually. So Roman Unze, Chargers, good fit for me, in my mind, at least. Let me know what you guys think about this one. What other ways you would have gone? I know Brock Bowers is on the board. I know offensive tackle definitely in play here. Tali Fuwanga and... Um, Rashawn Slater would have, been a, would have been a very fun pairing as well. So let me know. I think Roma Dunze was just kind of clear cut pretty easily the pick. It, it kind of just stood out. And I was like, I don't even have to think about this one. And then after I'd made the pick, I was like, well, Brock Bowers is here. If Joe Alt, I probably would have thought about it. So like, there's just some other things kind of going on in my head. But Roma Dunze, clear cut, number nine overall pick. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this one. Just talked about it. We're going to Lise Fawonga for the New York Jets. 
ties to him. He's a mauler. He's strong. He's an anchor against uh, the pass, and he might struggle a little bit against some speed and some twitch at the next level early on, especially. So Talise Fawonga is probably going to have to work on his, his feet uh, footwork, I guess, a little bit more. But I do like the player. I like the upside, and I like the uh, fit here to the Jets after they've uh, allegedly been raving about him in the building and there are some fans of Talise Fawonga in the New York Jets Association. We'll have to see what materializes come draft time, but I think Talise Fawonga number 10 overall. Again, straightforward, haven't done evaluations on um some of the most of the tackles. I would say like Joe Alt's probably the one I know the most about, and then Talise Fawonga, both from his senior bowl performance and Layatu Latu film against Oregon State. That's pretty much it. We're sticking with tackle for the New England Patriots, who are sticking with Jacoby Brissett for now. Obviously, Michael Penix is on the board. I don't think he's a, a top 11 type of guy. The last quarterback really remaining and we had so much going on in the top 10. It kind of depleted fast, but you're still getting such a good player at number 11, someone that is very good and someone that will fit in right away. I think he'll kind of slack off at first, if that makes sense. Not slack off, that's totally wrong. The, I think, hmm, how do you phrase this? I think he won't be as great right out of the gate. I think there'll be some learning to be had and who knows where he uh, ends up in the draft. He's kind of hard to place right now, but a top 11 picks feels fine for Fashionu. I don't think there's a whole lot going on outside like of the, the tackles and edge circles. I think they've pretty been, or they've been pretty definitive for a while now. It's kind of same old, same old, except uh, now we have Troy Faltanu and how high is he going to go? That's kind of the only thing shaken up on the, in the trenches between the edge rushers and the tackles in this draft. So Tackle two, uh, uh, Olu Fashionu, or tackle three off the board. Another trade Atlanta had uh, dropped him down four spots, which I believe are the Denver Broncos, and they get Dallas Turner out of it, and probably who you would have considered at eight. So you're getting a good player, and perhaps the same one you would have picked without the trade. So you gain more assets, and you get a good player. Dallas Turner, very solid in terms of uh, prospect wise, like consistent uh, top picks or top end picks in the drafts kind of correlates to Dallas Turner and what he has. He's a freak of an athlete. And I think he's actually a little bit better right away. And with the floor than people like to talk about, I think he's very solid against the run, but he's just got some good uh, speed to power, speed and power in the rush game. So hopefully Dallas Turner can, I think he turned some heads at the combine, but hopefully it was enough to push him up the board. I'm not, I don't know where I stand with this edge class. I'm not like done with it. I was going to say with verse and Leotu Latsu, they get really close and all three of those guys probably right there in the same tier for me right now but we'll have to see where uh things end up but dallas turner off the board at 12 quinion mitchell to the las vegas raiders he's going out of his way from ohio all the way to las vegas it's going to be a tough transition for quinion but i think he can manage it seems like the confident type he seems like he's got all the traits to be a very sticky corner in the league one of those shut down corners and i think he's got big time potential i like quinion a lot and talk about the athletic testing to his measurables to the way he performed over his uh tenure at toledo and then comes into the senior bowl shows press ability that he hadn't shown previously or might have been a little bit questioned because of the lack of like sample size at toledo and what he did he played a lot of off-man coverage and quinion mitchell just shut down the senior bowl so quinion mitchell the pick for me at number 13 lots to love and more to like about quinion mitchell I'll have him my cornerback one almost for sure. Brian Thomas Jr. finds himself flying off the board at 14, much like he flew at the combine, running 4-3-3 at like 210 pounds, like 6-3. Freak of nature. He's really good. I haven't got done with my final evaluation with him. I think he's actually my next receiver up on my list. I will let you guys know. I was really, really high. I had him actually above Roma Dunze first times through or first things First time through the tape earlier on in the this process. So Thomas Jr. was obviously high on my board. I expected the combine, but not that much. He was a, a freak of nature in every way possible, every way he showed up, all the places he tested. Measurables came in great, and for what he did at that size is incredible. And so he's going to New Orleans, jumping over any tackle they would have considered probably Troy Fauton and J.C. Latham. I just think Thomas is just too big time. They've got Rashid Shahid and Chris Olave and whoever else you want to point at, A.T. Perry, who's like uh, Brian Thomas Jr. light with way less speed. So it kind of take and, and 
take some more because Brian Thomas Jr. is just their clear cut, like opposite of Chris Olave that puts together two very solid receivers that have very different skill sets that match each other very well. I think that that, that would be a great blend of receiver. Shahid could still be your deep threat sort of guy alongside Thomas, who does a lot of the deep work as well. Like there's, there's just stuff to like about, you know, what if this is the pick, what do you do? And I think they actually have someone else, Cedric Wilson, maybe. I can't remember who they had. I thought I saw someone new on their depth chart that they might have scooped up during free agency that I hadn't seen. So Brian Thomas Jr. still comes in and probably right away their wide receiver too with big time potential at pick number 14. The Saints picking their wide receiver over offensive linemen, perhaps Brock Bowers. Who knows what they want to do here. Brock Bowers, the pick for me, unquestionably the tight end one. Stratosphere is above everybody else in this draft. There's some size concerns people like to talk about. I don't give a crap. Uh, you watch Brock Bowers on tape. He's a big guy. He does a lot of the, the dirty work fine and has much more to offer after the catch, before the catch, route running, catching, solid hands, uh, the way he gets over the middle, the way he turns, you know, like what looks like, oh, he's going down after, you know, just a couple yards after the catch. No, okay, he's broken off another 20 yards. So Bowers looks like an explosive athlete as well as a very solid prospect and someone that offers upside galore and someone we were talking about being a top five overall pick falling all the way to 15 just due to not only positional value, but opportunity for some of these teams. I don't think we're going to see anyone hop on the Brock Bowers train when they have a good tight end just because he's a generational prospect. I don't think it's quite to that extent. So Bowers maybe looked at a little bit different in the NFL, but his evaluation is almost going to be amazing for me for his final eval. So I can't wait to get to Brock Bowers again and watch through because um, it was such a joy the first time around and such a bummer for every other tight end in this class compared to Bowers. So Bowers, uh, like I said, Stratosphere's ahead, tight end one, tight end one off the board in this mock draft going 15th overall to the Indianapolis Colts. Jackson Powers Johnson, very solid interior offensive lineman, can play center, can play guard for you wherever you need him. I think Olu Olu with Timmy's also on this team. They might have picked up a guard. I know they lost Damian Lewis, so they're are some uh there's more needs i was thinking edge rusher here for them but i was looking at it and i, I kind of like their edge rushers right now i think it's just fine and to pick up someone that would just be a little bit more important in my eyes and a better draft pick right away for your team than if you were to stash uh, an edge rusher or play him as at depth you know like get jared verse playing behind ochenna nuosu and have him on a rotation with the other edge rushers on that team, like Boye, Mafe, Darrell Taylor, I'm sure, pretty sure got uh, extended. So I'm, I'm going to go with Jackson Powers Johnson here. Solid interior offensive lineman out of Oregon. Some good power and plays bigger than a lot of the average center or, I guess, guard even coming out right now. A lot lighter, a lot easier to move around. But Powers Johnson came in at like 330 playing center, which is unheard of <laughs> nowadays, right? So... Uh, Powers Johnson just doing what he does, getting picked in the first half of the mock draft, and we're getting into the second half here now with the Jacksonville Jaguars on the clock at number 17. Terrion Arnold is the pick for me. Didn't even have to look at the depth chart. Just went up and, and made the pick. It's a sprint to the board type. I know he ran a 4-5-1 at the combine. Not worried about that at all. Maybe he came in a little heavier than he thought or than he wanted to or than he played at just to show teams he got size so terry on our a little bit different of a scenario than we've seen in the past with him going a lot higher than this but he falls to 17 i don't even think this is fall i think this is where he ultimately ends up is anywhere from the 14 to 20 ish range i guess 22 maybe it depends on how teams will value um weight and combine testing so terry arnold still in my eyes, very good, explosive. He popped out on tape when I'm watching some guys against Alabama. And I don't think it's like, it's not that there's a lack of weight. It's just there are guys like Cooper DeGene. Uh, maybe Kool-Aid McKinstry, I think, has a little bit better size than Terry on Arnold. But I'm not saying he played at like 160, like Emmanuel Forbes or anything. It's just, again, teams might evaluate or have different criteria for some of these guys. And Terry on Arnold, maybe just a little bit more inconsistent than you'd like. And then he closed out the year pretty good. So Alabama corner, I just, I still like the player. I don't know why it might sound like I'm digging on him. I, I kind of hear it in my own tone. So don't know why that's the case. He's still corner two off the board and pretty easily corner number two. It seems like there's uh there's tiers to this. And I think Terry and Arnold is a tier above everybody else on the board right now. 
especially in my eyes. So let's get to the Cincinnati Bengals in the next pick. Byron Murphy, they lose whatever, whatever his name was. DJ Reader, very good player. Replace him with Sheldon Rankins. They have BJ Hill there now with Sheldon Rankins, but it's not good enough. All right, we're going to need someone else. We're going to need reinforcements. You have uh, Sam Hubbard and Trey Hendrickson off the edge. I think they have someone else there. They drafted Miles Murphy last year. And now you're getting Byron Murphy this year, uh, a beast. I think he just moves so different. He looks so freaky. He's twitched up. He's great with his hands, swipes, everything like that. Gets and kind of dictates the middle of the line. So I really like Byron Murphy in the upside here. I'm still quite a lover of Jerzon Newton. And I think he still has a chance to be above Byron Murphy on some of these teams' boards. But all things considered, combine testing, etc., all right, the pre-draft process is kind of favored. Byron Murphy with his uh, Daniel Jeremiah impression that came out. I think he was like number 11 to the Vikings at one point. I think DJ is like first mock draft or something. So his name got a little elevated between the draft community and uh, everybody else's evaluations on Byron. So he's going 18 to the Cincinnati Bengals. Jared Verse, and this just seems to be the best edge rusher ava available unless Verse, Laatu, Latu, Dallas Turner are gone and then the corners are there and in play so it seems like just whatever works best and you have your opportunities at this pick because even if verse was gone before this i'm going layout to law to if layout to law to and jared verse were off the board along with dallas turner there's probably a corner available for him and even if there wasn't and terry arnold and quinn young mitchell off the board i'm fine with cooper DeGene here so the way that the the rams are placed in this draft i think it works out well for him because they have it kind of a bad thing to say but they have needs where uh this draft seems to be a little bit stronger in the top end and especially in this area so even if uh you know with aaron donald retirement if there weren't a whole lot of available options i'm sure just on newton would be one or you're adding to some of the like offensive lines obviously something to watch out for for them as well so who knows i i couldn't tell you what their pick's gonna be because i think it's dictated a lot by the board and how it falls before them and we'll see at 19 if they want to make a move down move up whatever just didn't seem like a trade destination for me for many teams troy fatanu the pittsburgh steelers he's gonna go pair up well with broderick jones Roderick will stay on the right side. Fatsanu coming in on the left side. Get rid of Dan Moore. And you have yourself uh, you have yourself a tackle of the future on the left side, in my opinion. Fatsanu moved like a freaking tight end at the combine. It was ridiculously absurd. Fatsanu looks really good, and especially on an island I had written down for him. The way he is in space is not stupid, but I just was curious what the 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 talk was on guard. I was like, I think this guy can play, you know, tackle. I don't know why, why he wouldn't stick at tackle. And then his measurements came out and his arms were a lot longer. And then some of the, the you know, real draft analysts started saying stuff like, yeah, maybe he can stick out a tackle. I was like, I've, like, I've been saying that. Like, I, didn't, I watched him and I was like, okay, and like, what's the problem here? I don't see length really factoring in much for him. And he just wins with Will. He's really good in space, gets out and does his thing in the screen and run game. So Fatsanu, a, a fun player and um, a top 20 pick in the mock. Talked about him already. Jerzon Newton going to the Miami Dolphins at number E number 21. I don't know why number 11 came up in my head. Maybe that was the week he went against uh, Wisconsin because he was great in that game and absolutely game wrecked. That one was the first one I watched at Jerzon Newton and it was an amazing first impression for him. Jerzon Newton was really, really, really good. The rest of his tape seems to be pretty good. It speaks for itself. Byron Murphy and Jerzon Newton Probably the two getting talked about like as the first rounders right now or uh, Jerzon Newton's even being talked about as a possible second rounder, which is BS. I think teams will come to their senses by the time draft time comes around watching Jerzon Newton. What do I know? <laughs> what do I know? I know that Jerzon Newton's a Johnny Newton is a damn good football player and will be picked in the first round. All right. How about this? Make a forfeit in the comments if you want. <laughs> Whether or not Drazon Newton is a first rounder or not, and if he gets picked in the second round, I'll do whatever the like the forfeit is. I guess I don't, I don't know. I'm really tired again. I, it's like when I make these mocks, I'm always tired. Leatu Latu. It just happens every time for the freaking Philadelphia Eagles, man. They just get the best players. So I was like, hey, I'm gonna make Leatu Latu fall to them. I'm kidding. I didn't do that at all. The board fell how it was, and Leatu Latu went there. I know he's more of a pass rush specialist, and they just got Bryce Huff, and that's not like them. Normally they stash up on the uh, trenches, and they draft well there, and they sit the guys until it's their turn. But no, they went out and spent a lot of money on Bryce Huff, so they must like him, especially as a pass rusher, considering that's what he's getting paid to do. 
as a designated pass rusher. And they've got some players there. Brandon Graham back for another year, and he'll obviously coach up Leiatu Latu. They've got a good interior defensive line with Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, and Milton Williams, kind of the untalked about guy there that has a very big impact and will have to get his extension soon. I believe he's like 25 or 26. So we'll have to see how he shakes out contractually. Leiatu Latu, very, very solid player, very good game plan, rush plan, uh, whatever you want to call it with his uh, technique and everything like that. Very refined, best hands in the draft at edge rusher for sure. 2020 or uh, not 2022, but at 22 for the Philadelphia Eagles to get a guy as good as Leiatu Latu feels very unfair, but very realistic. After trading down, you're getting Cooper DeGene. Now, I thought about Michael Penix Jr. here, but I didn't end up pulling the trigger on it. Just too many deficiencies. I mean, maybe you want to go with them, but Jacoby Brissett, Michael Penix Jr., kind of like same player if you want to bank on or you think you're going to be bad. First year under Gerard Mayo, maybe come back, swing up in the draft next year on a Shador Sanders, Carson Beck, all the other names that I don't know. <laughs> Those are like the only two that came to mind right that instant. So we'll see when we get into uh, summer scouting. But uh, DeGene, the pick for me at 23 three the iowa native or I iowa corner i shouldn't say native i don't know exactly where his hometown is but he's coming from iowa going to new england and playing db not even cornerback i'm, I'm going to say db defensive back he can play safety nickel and boundary corner for you if you need so uh, i like dejean i like his versatility and i thought that he was kind of the guy here especially with run defending to go to the patriots just seemed like the patriots type over a nate wiggins who i worry about every here and there if his size especially it's yeah not good jc latham stops falling gets picks to america's team um off the board of the dallas cowgirls there's some uh bad with latham and there's also some very good and very solid size and power so upside sort of guy and i think he could be a very solid pro i don't know if you'll ever be one of the best tackles in football. There's always a chance. You never really know. It's the draft. A lot of these guys come up unquestioned. Look at Puka Nakua doing his thing. So JC Latham going to be the pick at 24. And again, I think he could be a very solid pro kind of uh, replacing Terrence Steele or if uh, Tyler Smith's going to stay at, or go stay at guard, steal over to the left side or Latham over to the left side. You're just going to need some tackle versatility there as well. So Latham 24 to Murica's team, the Dallas Cowgirls. Now onto my favorite team, the Green Bay Packers. Graham Barton. If you guys haven't seen a mock draft of mine before, we go Graham Barton, Kool-Aid McKinstry, or if there's a good, what do we do? I think it's just Graham Barton, JPJ, or the best corner available pretty much so yeah Graham Barton the pick for me here solid dude nasty on the inside he plays with a streak when he's like doing a he's doing like little loop-de-loops I don't know can, yeah stunts are uh, I'm pretty sure a thing on the offensive line I know they're referred to a lot with the defense but I, don't, I think you could call it that or like he's good in motion or while he's pulling the so Barton to me as a guard and interior guy just go replace either Sean Ryan or um the guy we have playing, Josh Myers, playing center right now, and I'd be fine with that upgrade for sure as I look for our offense. And the reason you don't want to go with any big hitters here is look at the chemistry and how the team was last year, and especially down the line. It's like it's really seemed like chemistry and everything kind of just mattered and meshed together. I don't want to mess with that balance right now with the building and the team and whatnot, and they can come out and stink again, and then they get better as the season goes on. I wouldn't be surprised if that's how the, the way things work this upcoming year for the Packers. But I would also think don't mess with the dynamic that is so friendly to the team right now that like you really saw the team do really, really well with hell. Dontavian Wicks outside, Bo Melton, Jaden Reed, Christian Watson when he's available, 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 and Romeo Dobbs when uh, he's making his plays and he was he was kind of inconsistent and that wasn't really talked about a whole lot but i uh, personal like i wasn't really a fan of him coming out of the draft so i was kind of bummed when we picked him in the fourth round out of nevada i'm talking about romeo dobbs by the way you know he's showed flashes and he's been very good at times there's also been times where it just hits his hands and it's on the ground or he runs the wrong route or he doesn't sit down or he doesn't try to block every here and there he's a very i guess he does try to block quite a bit never mind I, I, i'll lie about that one but grant barton comes in doesn't mess with anything and that's what i like so we're going with him here at pick number 25 for the Green Bay Packers. Again, Graham Barton out of Duke. The interior offensive line go replace someone on the inside that I don't want playing come uh, opening week, I guess, or I guess the first week of the season. Tampa Bay getting Nate Wiggins is their problem now. Not a big fan of his. I haven't really watched like the, the full you know, tape reel on him. I think I watched him against like Tez Walker when whatever, whatever was going on. Nate Wiggins is fine. He's a good player, good corner. 
I'm not thinking, I'm not saying that he's like the best ever or uh, anything like that. I'm just not saying that he's the worst ever either. He's got very solid speed traits. He matured after having a few incidents with Clemson, not taking it too serious, it sounded like. So there are just um, a little bit of um, not a character concern. I wouldn't call it that anymore. I'd just say like maturity issues there early on. And I'm not saying they still show, but like you might see it every here and there, whatever. Uh, weight was not ideal at the, the combine and then let alone he's running a four, what four, two, eight. And that's ridiculous. That's really, really, really good. But he, uh, like pulled his hamstring or, or whatever. He had a little injury there as well. So that's also a little bit concerning, but uh, Tampa Bay's problem now, like I said, Nate Wiggins off the board, still first rounder Darius Robinson. I don't do this. I haven't, I don't think I've picked him in the first round yet. And yet it just made too much sense. I was like, all right, what are the needs? And I went down the roster. And I was like, okay, edge rusher and defensive line. And then I saw Darius Robinson's name. I was like, yeah, Mary's Mims. No, they have Paris Johnson, but I mean, he could switch back over and you know, whatever. I was kind of like looking around, but Darius Robinson, I, I definitely could have gone to Mary's Mims and he would play right tackle or left because he practiced there a lot this year but it would be Paris Johnson on the left side of Mary Smims but I was like I'm just gonna go with the fun pick here and Darius Robinson who can play inside like as far in as three tech and then all the way out wide just guys versatile as all could be uh very good at the senior bowl kind of put himself on a map there ends up being a top 50 player for people uh, in the draft community and I don't think it's uh wrongfully so I think it's very rightfully so Robinson flashes of greatness honestly and the versatility and the best Yes. I've ever seen 285 on a human body. That's not like, I'm not trying to say, hey, that dude's hot. It's not like that. It's like, dude's built and curious what his body or body fat percentage is because it can't be high. It's the best I've ever seen 285 pounds look on a grown man. Like, that's insane. He's truly built different. Adonai Mitchell to the Buffalo Bills. I don't know if it's actually pronounced Adonai or Adonai, but Adonai is way more fun to say. Honestly, there is a lack of effort. I, I don't know. I don't know how much is going to be valued at the next level. I don't know. But as a star player in college, it's a lot different. If he comes into the NFL and has the same mindset, like, like, I'm not saying he has the mindset, oh, I'm too good for this. It's more of like a concerning trait, if you will, where it's he's not there. He's not in a Monroe St. Brown, and not everyone is, and very rare to have someone like that. But Adonai is very, not as urgent, I guess, is lacks urgency, but there's still lots to love. I actually do like the way he, like, kind of breaks down field separates really well his releases are good he is actually a smarter player than i think he gets credit for you know working back to the quarterback sitting in open zones seems to have some of that recognition there mid play and the, the mindful um i guess awareness so adonai mitchell number 28 to the buffalo bills i could see them going a few different ways but with the pickup of curtis samuel i was thinking like lad mcconkey but i was like not saying mcconkey's a, a certified slot but i think adonai just works best in the receiving room. And if they hadn't picked up, you know, Curtis Samuel, I think it would have been a strong case of like Lad McConkey here. I don't know why I went to linebacker. Lad McConkey could have been a stronger possibility. So I don't really know, but uh, Buffalo fans and Bills Mafia really want a receiver and they're saying receiver or bad pick in mock drafts. It's kind of just the way I've seen it. So Adane, uh, you're welcome, Bills Mafia. Detroit needs secondary help. They cut uh, Sutton after he has been accused of some stuff. Uh, they traded for Carlton Davis, who's still inconsistent. So get him some corner help. Get him Kool-Aid McKinstry, who's underrated right now, in my opinion. I think it'd go a lot higher than this, but it just doesn't sound like the NFL is really high on his athletic uh, ability overall. So who knows where he ends up draft time, but uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry seems to be a good player and looks like looks the part on tape, at least a few of the stuff I've, or a few of the things I've seen. So McKinstry, 29. To the Detroit Lions. Baltimore with the steal of the draft going to Marius Mims at number 30. Freak of nature, big ass man with, um, have you ever seen a bodybuilder except as big as Marius Mims is? Because that's exactly what he is. He, he looks, dude, I watched him get up from an interview and turn back around. He had like a tighter shirt on. Obviously every shirt he finds is going to be tight. He's massive. He's gigantic. And like, you could see the back muscles through and most of these guys, like they stand up, they're kind of a little droopy, maybe a little fat. All right. Not fat shaming any NFL player here or anything, but Mims got up and like, you saw back muscles. And I was like, this dude's different. And the way he plays on the field when he's available, obviously injuries are a a part of his game and have been since day one so georgia tackle ah man he would go so high if injuries weren't a problem but they are again this could be seal the draft especially all the way down at 30 for the baltimore ravens 
just kind of the way the board fell. And again, I could have seen him going at, you know, 27. I could have seen him going way, way, way that way. But instead, he falls way, way this way, all the way down at 30. Baltimore snag a good player at the, the tail end of the first round with some very high upside. I still like Kamari Lasseter, especially as a first round corner. I wouldn't say like he's a bonafide first round corner. People saying early second, which I'd be kind of cool with. So Kamari Lasseter, I, I like the poise in his game. He's not really um jumping any routes or anything i think he's more conservative conservative smarter thought out strategic sort of guy that kind of just plays the game kind of shadows a guy i guess he never really jumps in front it doesn't take his chances it's good and bad like obviously you'd like a guy to maybe change in that aspect but i think it's what the the niners need to be honest diamador lenore and all his uh mistakes Traverius ward and like every time there's a 50 50 throw uh ball thrown his way it looks like it's a pi flag or you're worried one's gonna come out of the ref's hand so inconsistencies in the back end you can't have that as a super bowl contending team and lassiter i think helps a few things out contractually as well Maybe if he works out well enough, Traverius Ward is on his way out. Lasseter steps away up. Rookie contract versus paying Traverius Ward a lot of money. So it might work out in the long run for San Francisco a lot better than you'd think. Picking Lasseter, number 31 overall, but just think they need that sort of presence in the back end of that defense. People want receiver here, but I'm going Tyler Guyton for the Kansas City Chiefs. And people might have a problem with that. I really couldn't be... I couldn't care less, actually. So Tyler Guyton, the pick for me here, he'd probably go play uh, right tackle. Jawan Taylor goes and plays left tackle for him or Tyler Guyton on the left side, whatever happens. But I think Guyton, right side, Jawan, left side, where he played previously with the Jaguars, wasn't so great. And, um, you know, move sides back to, to something he's played before. I don't think that would be the biggest issue. Well, Guyton uh, learns... I guess the way they lose Donovan Smith, and I don't think Wanye Morris is a very viable option, and I think I like the upside of Tyler Guyton a lot more, uh, athletically speaking as well. So, fun prospect. Talked very highly about him, and then there's been some shots at him, and then he about slips out of the first round here, so this is pretty low for him in terms of recent, um, I guess, recency bias. Tyler Guyton, the pick for the Kansas City Chiefs. Let me know, Chiefs fans out there, if you guys like this or if you'd rather have a Lad McConkey or a receiver, Keon Coleman, whatever, whoever it ends up uh, being for uh, the Chiefs. Like, let me know where you think uh, they can or where you think this pick lands on the spectrum of likeness and, and not liking me anymore. So that'll be all for me. Thank you guys for watching. It's been fun. It was a fun mock. And um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like. Go back and look at all the videos on the channel kidding i've been quite inconsistent so there's not that that much but the quarterback rankings video that came out a very good video in my opinion and one of my best if not my best on the the channel so if you guys don't mind please go check that out and uh yeah I'll see you guys next time this is